The solid in the diagram is made up of a right prism with a square base and a right pyramid on top of the prism. The length of the prism is 12, the side of the base is 6. Okay, so everything they say there we can see. Okay, so we've got a, um, we've got a rectangular box and then we've got a pyramid. Now, I know I've mentioned this before, but what you need to understand is that this is actually just two different, it's two shapes put together. So you need to understand the surface area and volume formulas for this kind of shape. And then you need to understand the surface area and volume formulas for this kind of shape. And I mean, really understand the formulas, not just looking at the formulas that they sometimes give you in a test, because when they give you those formulas in an exam or a test, it's not always the formula that you have to use, especially when we're talking about surface area. When we are talking about surface area, things can go very different when you put the shapes together. Okay, so we'll talk about that as we go along, but make sure you understand your grade nine measurement formulas and you don't just memorize them, but you understand exactly how the formula works. For example, um, if we have a cylinder, which is like that, we know that it's got um, a circle at the top and a circle at the bottom. So when you are looking at the surface area, we know that a circle is pi r squared, but there's two of them at the top and the bottom. And then we've also showed in previous lessons to work out this part that goes around the shape. You know, this part that you can see here that goes all the way around. We know that that is two pi r h. Now, let's say for example, we had to put some type of cone on the top here. Now there's a cone there. So if you then had to look at the total exterior surface area of the shape, well then you wouldn't use this part over here because this part is no longer on the outside. But the problem is, is in the exam, they're gonna give you this formula. But we actually do not have two circles anymore. Whoops, that's meant to be there. We don't have two circles anymore we, because this one is not on the outside. And so you would actually have to know that you need to modify the formula like that. But what a lot of learners do is they think they can just know the formulas. And then when they get this formula in the exam, they go and use it just like that. And then they get everything completely wrong. So I will highlight that as we go through this example as well. It's important that you understand your different uh, formulas. When it comes to volume though, that's a lot easier to work with. Okay, so let's have a look at the first question. It says, calculate the slanted height of the triangular face of the pyramid. Now the slanted height is, well, let me show you what it's not. It's not this, they're not talking about that, or for example, that. What they're talking about is if I take this triangle over here and I draw it over here for you, whoops, it's this length coming down the middle. Now I don't mean, that doesn't mean I'm talking about from here to the middle over there. No, no, I'm talking about from here to here along the face of that pyramid or that triangle. Okay, so it's coming down the side. It's almost like you're in Egypt and there's a pyramid and you are sliding down the side of the pyramid. You're not falling through the middle, you're going down the side of the pyramid. So here's a pyramid. Now, I'm talking about this length from the top to here, going down the, well, let's just wait, let's get that in the middle and then over there. So it's going down the, side of the shape. I'm not talking about going from there downwards, you know, like down to the middle of the pyramid. I'm talking about going along the side, okay? That's what they talk about when they talk about the, well, that's what they mean when they say the slanted height, slanted. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly just take that triangle and then just draw it for us like this. And so we're trying to calculate that. Now, the way that we do this, is we actually, we actually, sorry, we don't need to do it like that. We don't need to show it there. We actually use Pythagoras. So what we do is we look at, we look at the slanted height, which is the one we're trying to calculate, which goes like that. Then we go inwards towards the center 
and then we go like that. And that makes a perfect 90 degree triangle. Okay, so if I draw that from the side, what we've done is we've done that, where this is the slant. This is the eight centimeter that you can see on the diagram. They've told us that. Now, for this length over here, they told us that the side of, the, wait, where did they say? The solid in the diagram is made of a right with a square base. Okay, so we know that this is a square. So we know with a square that all of these are six centimeters. So if this length here then is six, well then this length here would be half of that, which is then three. So this length is three, and now this is a 90 degrees, and we can now use Pythagoras to calculate this slanted height. We don't need to use trigonometry, there's no angles anyway. So we can just, because it's a 90 degree, we can just go and use Pythagoras, and so we can just say eight squared plus three squared, um, let's call this slanted height. So the slanted height to the power of two, well, let's actually say slant, otherwise it looks like a five. Okay, and so now you guys wanna know how to use Pythagoras, and so you go ahead and you work all of this out, and we get 73, so the slant squared is 73, and then of course we take the square root, and so the slant will be square root of 73, which is 8.54, centimeters and there we have it over there okay so that's how we do that one now it says calculate the area of one of the triangular faces okay so now they're talking about this triangular face over here this will be very easy but it would confuse some learners so check this out if i go draw that triangle okay it's not a 90 degree triangle so some learners they think oh so what do we do kev do we have to do we have to maybe draw this line down and make a 90 degree and then work out the area of both triangles? Nope, that's how I used to do it when I was in, well that's how I thought we had to do it back when I was in school. But all that you need when you're using this formula is that the base and the height make 90 degrees. But the height doesn't have to be a side in the triangle. So what do I mean? So if this is your base, then to find your height, we call it your perpendicular height. All you do is you go to the other corner that we haven't used, which is this one, and you just draw a line going perpendicularly down. And it doesn't necessarily have to be in the middle. For this one, it probably will be. It's all pretty symmetrical. But you can even get triangles that look like this. And if you just go from there and you go perpendicularly down, that's the height of your triangle. You can even get triangles that do this. So if this is your base, you go to the opposite corner and you go perpendicularly down and then you just extend this line. Okay, so that is how you get your perpendicular height. So you just go from the opposite corner of the base and you just go perpendicularly down. And then the height we worked out in the previous, it's not this height, remember, that height is not part of the triangle, that goes down to the, the middle of the pyramid, but we're talking about the slanted height, which is, right, that's, that's this length of here. And so that would be what we got in the previous one, 8.54, 8.54. Okay, and so now we can work it out. Half base, base is six, uh, 8.54. And if we calculate that, we get 25.62. And that'll be in centimeters squared because it's a area. Now with this last one, it says calculate the total surface area of the solid. Okay, now let's see here. Sometimes maybe they are giving us the right thing here. It says total surface area is area of slanted plus the area of the right prism. Incorrect. Now that is where they are going to catch you out um, in your test. Let me explain. Because what a lot of learners are now going to do is they're gonna say, okay, um, area of the right prism. So then they're going to think, oh yes, what was my formula for the area of a right prism? What was the formula? And then they're going to go right down their formula, which is maybe going to be something like, um, well, I don't know, it's going to be some like long formula. And what they're forgetting is that if you go take a normal pyramid, I mean, not a pyramid, a um, prism, Okay, so something like that. If you go work out the so total surface area of that shape, you're gonna be including absolutely all of the shapes on the outside, and that's gonna include 
this one over here, but we must not include this one over here because that is part of the inside of that shape. When we are looking at surface area, we only wanna look at the outside. So actually just ignore completely what they're saying here and I'll show you a better way to think about this. And this is the way I explained it in the grade nine measurement um, is the following. Just look at what shapes you have. So we've got a square okay, which is on the outside, and then we've got four rectangles. One, two, and then you've got three, and then there's a fourth rectangle here in the front, and those rectangles are all going to be the same, actually, okay? So we've got a square, four rectangles, so it's a square plus four rectangles. We won't include this one because that's not on the outside, so then we just have one, two, three, four triangles, four triangles just like that. So if you can then go work out the area of all of those, add them together, you've got your answer. It's as simple as that. So for the square, okay, so the surface area is going to be um, the square, which is gonna be six times six. The rectangles are gonna be um, six times 12, but there's four of them. So we're gonna say four times six times 12. And then the four triangles, we've already worked out um, the area of one of those, which was 25.62. So we'll just take four of those. And that's it. You can now go work out your answer. 426.48. And that will be in centimeters squared.